Hi everyone, welcome to pal to tech Fujifilm cameras offer an amazing collection of professional video features, and one in particular, the ability to shoot in F-Log, is something that everyone should be familiar with. So what exactly is F-Log? Well, to answer that, let's return for a second to still photography and talk about color space. On your Fujifilm camera, you can choose the color space that you want to work with. You do this right in the IQ section of your menu, where it says color space, you can choose one of these two color spaces right here. A color space is the total range of colors that can be represented in an image. Think of these color spaces as two separate but independent boats going down the river that you can pick one of them to ride on. Adobe RGB is a larger color space and has a wider range of color variations than sRGB. And because of this, it's often better suited if you're going to be printing your photos. sRGB, on the other hand, has a smaller range of colors, and that's what's used by many monitors and phones and tablets, etc., to display the full sRGB gamut of colors. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but there is a third color space that's used for video. A third boat of color space that's going down the river that you need to catch a ride on if you're going to be shooting video. This color space is called Rec. 709. And and it's used by video displays such as computer monitors, HDTVs, and other devices. And because of this, Rec. 709 is the color space used when your camera records video. So for example, if I put the camera, say, in Eterna film simulation mode and hit record, that's the color space, the boat, that is, that's being used, and it's called Rec. 709. Therefore, the colors that you see in the viewfinder and on the back of the camera should be fairly accurately represented when someone else watches your video back on their monitor. Now, without getting too technical, let me just say that shooting video just like life, <laughs> is made up of compromises. When you shoot video in the Rec. 709 color space, you give up some dynamic range flexibility as the camera adds more color processing at the time you shoot your video. For most situations, this is fine. When you choose a color profile, also known as a film sim, on your camera and you start shooting video, the camera does a spectacular job in color rendering and dynamic range for the most part. But what happens in situations where you're shooting a scene that contains a very wide dynamic range? For example, shooting someone outside walking with the sun behind them, or perhaps seated next to an open window that is much brighter than the rest of your scene. Under some of those conditions, if you shoot regular Rec. 709 video, you will have far less flexibility in post-production later on to fix some of those dynamic range problems problems before you start color grading. So to help solve this problem, Fujifilm gives you a setting on your camera called F-Log. The log in F-Log stands for logarithmic curve. And this curve functions very similar to the curves adjustment tool that you may be familiar with in Lightroom or in Capture One. It's basically taking the shadows and pushing them up toward the midtones. And here's the major takeaway I want you to remember. It's doing this before the camera processes the video to your S SD card. And because of this, guess what? Just like a RAW file, you can get back more dynamic range in your video in post-production. Good stuff, right? Hold on a second. First, we gotta go over some F-Log settings. The settings for F-Log can be found in your menu under the video camera right here. There are some restrictions when shooting in F-Log. 
First off, there is a minimum ISO value of 640. More on this in a second. Also, in some cases, like in mix and match, 60 frames per second is not allowed. What do I mean by mix and match? Here you have shoot Rec 709 to the SD card and Rec 709 to HDMI. Here you have shoot F-Log to both, but here you have shoot Rec 709 to the SD card and F-Log to HDMI. This is mix and match. And if you choose this particular setting, you cannot shoot at 60 frames a second. It'll show you at the bottom of the camera what the restrictions are. You will also notice at the bottom a setting for HLG. We will not be covering that one here. I have a one weird word acronym limit per video. Okay, we already are covering F-Log. We're not gonna get into HLG, but I'll tell you just to tell you. HLG stands for Hybrid Log Gamma, and that is an HDR, high dynamic range, video format that requires very specific HDR reference monitors in order to edit the footage properly. In fact, it also uses the new REC 2020 color space, which is a much larger color space than REC 709. It's nowhere near as often used as F-Log, so we will continue to focus on F-Log for the remainder of this video. Here are some important points to know about shooting in F-Log. Number one, shooting in F-Log is not the same thing as shooting in RAW format. Just like a JPEG, when you shoot in F-Log, you are baking in your exposure and color information right into your image, right into your movie. Number two, shooting in F-Log requires a minimum ISO of 640. This is a big deal, not because of the noise. Fujifilm does a great job with noise at ISO 640, but rather because you will absolutely need an ND filter when shooting in bright lighting conditions, such as outdoors in sunlight. A variable ND filter is best, which means you're gonna have to carry another piece of gear with you. Did someone say gear? It's all about the gear. Kira Kwana, give me that. This is the best ND filter I like to use, a variable ND filter, because if you have it on your camera, right, then you can just turn the ring a little bit and control the intensity of the light hitting the lens. Remember that when you're shooting video at say 24 frames per second, and then you apply the 180 degree shutter rule, so now your shutter speed is 1 48th of a second. Well, pal to tech, I hear you say, What's the problem with that? Well, if you're shooting outside and now you have a minimum ISO value of 640 and you're shooting at 1 48th of a second and you want to have nice depth of field at say f2.8, your scene is going to be completely washed out because you're letting too much light into the camera. So like Gear Iguana says, you know, it's all about the gear. You need to use a variable ND filter for those situations. It's basically like sunglasses for your camera. Number three, when you are shooting in F-Log, you are getting more of a flat looking image that contains more image data in the highlights and in the shadows, but it's a flat looking image. And therefore, the catch to all of this, you must work with it in post-production to add that color back and fine tune your exposure. In that case, it's actually, yeah, kind of like working with a RAW file in Lightroom or Capture One. A really good way to think of this is that when you set your camera to shoot in F-Log, you're telling your camera, don't don't worry too much about the colors in this scene. Just use all of your brain and your processing and your dynamic range to get me the best possible coverage for my highlights and my shadows, okay? <laughs> Let's take a look at some footage and I'll show you what I mean. Here's a video I shot on a Fujifilm X-T4 using the F-Log setting. So the first thing you need to do in post-production when you shoot in F-Log is apply a lookup table. You might hear this referred to as a LUT. Now there are some wonderful LUTs online and I may do a video in the future where I review some of them, but for now, you can go right to Fujifilm's website and download the official Fujifilm lookup tables for their cameras. Once you have those files, you can then apply the LUT to that F-Log footage that you shot. And the process of adding a LUT depends on what post-production software you're using. For this demo, I'm using Final Cut Pro. You see it right here. X-T4 F-Log Gamut to Eterna Rex 709, right here. This one right here. 
There, you see that? Have a look at that. Now it looks very similar to the one that was shot straight out of camera. Now I'm gonna correct my exposure. And this is where shooting in F-Log really pays off. I'm going to turn my midtones way down and increase my highlights a little bit. Now the idea obviously is that you're doing this in post-production and you're using most likely a waveform monitor and you wanna go no higher than 100 IRE for the highlights and no lower than zero for the shadows. So I will turn up my highlights just a little bit and have a look at that. You see how I can adjust it just like this. I don't want to go above 100. Ah! You see how it's clipping the highlights? So I just kind of move it to maybe, I don't know, right around there is good. Then I'm going to bring my shadows down just a little bit like there so it touches the zero. Now the big kicker is the midtones. Have a look at this. I'm going to bring down my midtones. Look at that. Not too much. Maybe right there is good. Okay, here I'm zoomed in at 150%. The F-Log footage that's now had the LUT applied and exposure corrected is on the left. The Eterna is on the right. When I try and add some additional exposure correction to my Eterna version, watch what happens. Look at what happens when I adjust the midtones to the paint on the barn and the sign. If I try and turn down my highlights, Overall, it gets muddy. Now, if I switch to my F-Log, look at how far down I was able to pull my midtones in the F-Log, and I can pull them down even further, and look at how nice and even it goes down. You see that? You see how nice and even that comes down? Look at the trees, look at the sky. But if I try and do the same thing in the Eterna version with my midtones, watch. You see the sky? It's more muddy. Look at the barn. Ugh. So you get much more flexibility when you are adjusting your midtones in post production in log footage. Here's another example of shooting a color chart in both F log and then a version in Eterna. Obviously, looking at the F log, it's nice and flat, and you can even see in the waveform monitor how even the white area, the whitest whites, are nowhere near 100. F-Log has pulled those down. And look at the shadows. Look how high up they are. This is supposed to be pure black. It's supposed to be way down to zero. But see how it pulled it all the way up, all right? And here's the version shot with Rec. 709 or Eterna straight out of the camera. You see how it's more where it should be initially. So what do you do? Well, I am first going to apply a LUT. And this time, instead of using the Eterna LUT, I will use the wide dynamic range LUT from Fujifilm. They make another one as well. And these LUTs are all free, by the way. I'll have a link where you can download them below. So, okay, so I just added that. And if you compare the F-Log footage here with the Eterna footage here, see, have a look at that. You see that? So now I need to make some exposure adjustments to the F-Log footage. I'm going to bring up my highlights right there until it gets to about 100. Now here's the kicker. The shadows, as you can see here and here, are almost at zero. I'm gonna bring them down just a little bit. There you go. The key is in the midtones. I am now gonna bring down the midtones. You see that? Bringing down, look how much flexibility I have. There we go. And I'll turn up the saturation just a little bit so you can see it. So look at these two now side by side. Notice on the left in the F-Log version, I have more detail in the table. You see that? And if I try and go to the Eterna version and perhaps turn up my midtones a little bit, look at how it starts to wash out the color chart. You see that? There's just less overall to work with. Whereas here in my F-Log, I can do all kinds of stuff. You see that? And another thing you can do in F-Log, which is awesome, is suppose you're sick of Eterna one day and you wanna have a different look to it. You can add a different LUT. All you have to do is go back to your original F-Log footage. Let's choose a third party item don't know, classic chrome say. And there we have a more classic chrome look. You see that? And obviously you can go back into your exposure and make some additional adjustments as needed to your footage. All right, here are my thoughts on whether or not you should use F-Log and some important tips if you do decide to go down the F-Log path. First off, do not use F-Log unless you really need it for high dynamic range scenes. Most of the time, you will not want to be using F-Log at night or in scenes where you can carefully control the lighting. Think of F-Log as more of a band-aid tool in case you can't control the dynamic range and it happens to be very wide. Or a great tool you can use if you really want to get creative with your color grading. When you are using F-Log, you must be very careful in judging your exposure when shooting. This is because the highlights are less highlighty, right? Then and the shadows are less 
shadowy. Basically, everything is flat in your scene. And you're, you know, if you're looking at the display on the back of the camera trying to judge your exposure, that can be difficult. So to help with this, you could either use an external monitor loaded up with the LUT that you're gonna use, or the X-T4 actually has a special feature to enable a preview of the film sim while you're shooting in F-Log. Check this out. Say I'm shooting in F-Log. I look through the viewfinder and I have a flat profile. It's very hard to judge exposure. You see that without blowing stuff out. But if I go into my camera settings, it's in the wrench under screen setup, F-Log View Assist. If I turn that on, look, and now you know what this means. You see what it says right there? Display tone, corrected image, BT709, Rec709. You know what that means now. My mission here is almost finished. If I turn that on, you get all of the color and the normal film sim look, but I'm still shooting in F-Log. You see that? So it's recording F-Log to the SD card, but I can judge my exposure on the back of the screen. I'm seeing it more what it would look like when a LUT is applied to it later on in post-production. I recommend using an external monitor if your budget will allow that. If I had to pick my favorite video accessory on Earth for Fujifilm camera video shooting, it would be this Atomos Ninja 5 monitor. You can load a LUT right up onto the monitor, which is great to judge your exposure. What's wonderful is that you can set the Fujifilm camera in dual mode so that you are saving your, say, Eterna Rec. 709 film simulation version onto the SD card, but you are sending F-Log to the external monitor to record and to keep that. So now you have both copies in case you need one or the other. You will want to use zebras at all times when you're shooting in F-Log. Zebras show you exactly what highlights you're blowing and will give you the opportunity to fix them before it's too late. Zebras can be turned on by going into the camera and looking for the zebra setting. You can choose either left or right, it doesn't matter. Now, now, zebra level for shooting F-Log, I recommend you set it to either 100% or 95%. I sometimes go back and forth between the two. Let's set it at 100% right here. 100% means that the zebras will appear at the point at which your highlights are so overblown that they are pure white and there's no color information and you cannot fix it. So here's what it looks like with them on. You see that? Have a look at that. Now, if I turn down my aperture, if I stop down my lens, Lens, they're starting to go away. You see that? But I'm now at F16 and they're not all gone away. This is why you need to have an ND filter. Now you slap an ND filter on, see? Continuing with exposure, you generally want to be careful with underexposing as well. I would avoid underexposing any footage that you're shooting by more than one stop. Rather, I would expose all the way to the right up to the point where I'm just beginning to clip a few highlights and then pull back a bit and experiment from there. And that's really what shooting in F-Log is all about. More flexibility with dynamic range and more flexibility to change the look and the color grading of your footage. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. This is one of my many videos I plan on doing in my series on videography for the Fujifilm camera. In the meantime, I will see you in another video again real soon. Take care. Get as many as you can. Okay. No big deal. That's great. All right, now go out, leave the room. Okay, and cut.